You will often see his name appear on Pride in the Port, for good or bad. <laughs> Justin lives in the area with his family and he has supported and helped many local campaigns and individuals in his community. And it's great to have him here today. So please welcome Justin Maddis. Thank you very much, Steve. I'll uh, slip you the fibre later for those uh, those kind words. So thank you very much, for, for everyone, for coming to Ellesmere Port today. Uh, if you live here, it's great to see you. If you've come from outside the constituency, welcome. And I hope uh, you enjoy uh, the facilities our town has to offer and you don't get too cold standing out here today. But we've got a great lineup of speakers and, and artists who are going to... Um, uh, hopefully entertain and inform you today uh, because it's obviously a very very important subject we know it's a subject that has galvanized communities up and down the country and uh, Ellesmere Port is no different in that respect so we've got a very clear message that we want to send out today and I think the number of people here uh, has reinforced uh, what this community's feelings are in respect of that so um, I'm not going to uh, repeat all the uh, uh, very uh, technical details that we've had already today and of course you've got the stands at the back uh, on the reasons why we don't like uh, the proposals that are coming forward on fracking but we do know that this isn't just uh, individual campaign groups who are saying these things these this is uh, coming from some very senior sources so uh, about two and a half years ago uh, the House of Commons Environmental Audit Committee did a report on fracking and they were pretty damning about the proposals. Uh, in particular they were concerned about the impacts on uh, water, also uh, the impacts on air quality and also biodiversity. Um, those things alone should be enough for us to want to stop uh, these plans. Um, however, the big challenge I think, and this is where the whole strategy from the government is fundamentally wrong, is that they are focusing on fracking in, in terms of uh, uh, filling the uh, possible energy gap that we're going to see over the next few years, um, when actually uh, we should be, of course, looking to invest in renewables. Now, we know that our climate change commitments... Our climate change commitments uh, require us to limit any uh, global temperature increases to less than two degrees. I think if we uh, carry on down this road, there's absolutely no chance of us making it. I think that if this uh, uh, current sort of push for fracking is allowed to take hold in this country, all the investment, all the attention will go on that industry and renewables will get pushed to the side. And by the time we realise that actually we need to do something really serious about climate change, it will be too late. So we've got to hold up and start the fight now. So as, as we know, there are a number of uh, planning applications uh, already uh, started. Uh, or in the pipeline and it's very important that as many local people object to uh, any p planning applications as possible. Uh, the council will ultimately uh, make a decision on the planning applications but we have to be realistic that the um, dice have already been loaded in terms of the planning system against councils being able to make decisions freely and fairly uh, to represent their local communities. We already know that a number of these decisions up and down the country have been called in uh, by the Secretary of State. We know that the uh, all-powerful uh, and, and very uh, well-funded uh, investment companies will uh, do their best to uh, bring legal challenges if there's any sense that the councils have not followed the correct procedures. So we know this is not a level playing field, but we must make our voices heard locally. And the big worry is that in the Conservative Party manif manifesto at this election, uh, there was a proposal to actually take out uh, planning applications from any local involvement at all, which would effectively see uh, these kind of uh, facilities imposed on local communities without any say or consultation. And that is something that we must fight very strongly against, uh, because that is not in any sense local democracy or a fair way to run our society. Um, Now, um, 
I don't think actually the local Conservatives have realised they have a little bit of a problem here because they have put forward a proposal that any uh, fracking applications in the Cheshire West area should be subject to a local referendum. Now, um, that may sound superficially like quite a good idea, but actually it's a complete load of nonsense. There is no current legal basis for uh, referendums to determine planning applications and actually what I worry would happen is that the uh, very uh, well-funded uh, companies who are looking to invest in these facilities would actually flood the area with propaganda, uh, really try and turn public opinion in their favour. And actually, again, it would not be a level playing field. So I think that proposal is quite disingenuous. Uh, it's also not going to happen. So we've got to have faith in our local councils to make the right decision. But we also have to be realistic about the future uh, direct direction under the current government. Now, obviously, I would say that we have a very clear mandate in this area to oppose fracking. Myself, Chris Matheson and Mike Ainsbury were all elected in June this year on very clear anti-fracking uh, uh, manifestos and so I would say that actually the uh, people like IGAS and INEOS have no mandate to impose what they are trying to do in this area so and it's very important that you all stand with us on that but uh, as, as we know this isn't just about one political party it's actually uh, you're going to hear from a number of representatives from political parties today uh, and, and actually, it's, it's, it's not a part of political thing, it's a thing about the community, it's about actually our future, it's about the future of our planet, it's about what kind of world we want our children to grow up in. We don't want uh, climate change going out of control, we want a sustainable future, we want energy uh, that's created from uh, the natural resources that we have, uh, such as the sun and the wind. Uh, we can do that in this country, we're actually very well blessed in access to renewable energy. We just have to have the political will there. I believe that we, we can show a good fight here, we will get that political will through. But it's important that we fight against these proposals right now uh, and we tell the big companies to frack off. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justin. Okay. Um, our next speaker originates from the area and actually attended the Catholic High School in Chester. She began her working life serving at the, sh at the counter of a pawnbroker and experience that she says taught her more about the struggles of life than any degree or qualification ever could.